recording go live. There we are. Ah. Okay. Hello. I think we're here now. Let me know if you can see <laughs> us in the chat because there's a bit of a delay between Riverside and the actual YouTube. I think we are actually functioning now. Every day is a brand new challenge. Just when I think I've got the live stream figured out. You guys, I went live for four hours straight last night. If Ooh. you were with me, I am so thankful to you. So happy to see you. Um, there we are. If you were with What's me up? last night on our Oscar live stream, first of all, thank you for hanging out with me. That was so much fun. We will definitely do more of these. It was a blast. And we had lots of old friends there. We had lots of new folks come in and ask questions like, can I see your feet? And the answer to that is no, but I'm happy to happy to answer many of the questions. Mick in Louisville is here. Jesse, good morning. Jesse was there last night. Matt, Matt was there last night. Nancy was there last night. Um, hello, Chick Modest. Teddy KGB was there last night. So lots of our regular friends were there. It was so much fun. Lewis Cook, good to see you again. One of our channel members. Hello, hello. Um, Alonzo, how was your Oscar night? Good, relaxed. We were going to have friends over, but then I, you know, the COVID of it all. So it's like there is plague in this house. But uh, Dave made this really delicious. Uh, uh, he he always does a really fun pasta thing, and so he made the uh, the the Ruth Reichel bolognese, and we had it on some cascatelli pasta. It was delicious, and um, yeah. So we just and and I I gave myself the year off from trying to like live tweet the whole thing as I have in the past, and I wasn't really quite feeling up to joining you in the room, but next. Next year when i'm feeling better i promise i will be um but yeah it was it was chill it was fun and i lost my mind when godzilla won oh that was a good one yes that yeah. was an excellent excellent win for the night i was happy about that as well um yeah we'll talk about all of the winners for sure um chris wright thank you for being there sasheen so glad that you are here today gage sorry i missed the live stream last night but watched some of it this morning um <laughs> gage is sorry about the freaks it happens you know we exist in the world and some people have a foot fetish and i we can't help that society. i can't help that but most folks were absolutely lovely yes nancy thank you baxter was the star of the show baxter who is uh, behind uh, me on the couch sleeping was also behind me on the couch sleeping and it was it was great he was very popular um yeah it was a short oscar show it was only three hours and 23 minutes long yeah, I think generally speaking, like this was a really well mounted show. I mean, they they did pretty much all the right things in terms of keeping it moving along. Um, you know, I think a lot of the 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 bits landed really yeah. well. Um, they brought back the. Do you know who started the? Let's bring out five former winners to like talk about each of the nominees in the acting category. No, but that was a beautiful touch. Yes, that's from the Bill Condon year. He actually oh. created that, and so they brought that back, which I thought was great. I think the women did it better than the men did. There were some mm -hmm. of the men where you kind of felt like they were reaching for something to say, whereas the women felt more heartfelt and, and direct about it. Um, the Nick Cage thing was funny, though, about Paul Giamatti's eyes. Thing was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> there were several that were, that were you know, chef's kiss. Um, I thought, you know, like the John Cena bit was hilarious. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the I'm Just Ken number is an all-timer now, mm -hmm. I think, when we look back at, at Oscar shows. So, yeah, I, I, I'd say, you know, they did. They did pretty much right this year. Yeah. Um, David LeMann, thank you so much for your kind donation. David says, I know Alonzo is pretty bummed out by Oppenheimer winning Best Picture, but it's great. It's a great win that will age great. It's not a bad Best Picture winner like Crash, Green Book, or Coda. What say you, Alonzo? Yeah, that's that's fair. And I mean, like, look, <laughs> uh, I am more used to a movie I'm kind of about winning Best Picture than I am about being invested in one. Like, Everything Everywhere and Boyhood are some sort of recent anomalies, Parasite. But beyond that, I, generally speaking, I, I, my thought is Best Picture winner is going to be something that I'm not thrilled with. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's fine. I don't think this is, it's not an embarrassing win. It's a, it's a movie that checks the boxes in terms of being a pretty good biopic and it was a box office hit. Yeah. Um, it's solidly made. I know you don't love it, but like from a craft perspective. Yeah. I, you know, I think there are, <laughs> there are some aspects of that. I think are, are somewhat overrated in terms of the cinematography and the editing, but uh, you know, look, ultimately a movie wins best picture and now the pylon begins. So I'm just going to stand mm -hmm. back and let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, Leo says, can we talk about how Jimmy Kimmel felt like he was no different from Joe Coy? I never understood the hate toward Joe Coy. Joe Coy felt like he tried more than drug car. Michael, 
the year before. I thought Gerard Carmichael was kind of brilliant in a subversive uh, way. Absolutely. Uh, and Gerard Carmichael was, do, was delivering in the way that he delivers. And I think that Joe Coy, you know, had he not thrown his writers under the bus, his flop sweat might not have been so evident. But I mean, yeah. Kimmel was relaxed. Like, yeah, did all the jokes land? No. But does he no. still know how to deliver them like a pro absolutely yeah um, a lot a lot of kind of like bad dad jokes from kimmel but then no. the thing when when trump put out his little tweet or whatever you want to call it like Truth that social, was a, yeah. that that was a good zinger at the end for sure and you know that trump is stewing about it totally <laughs> love that love that that all of hollywood is laughing at him that's the best he could yeah. pretend that he doesn't want to be part of the elites but you know he He's like so craves, easy to get to. Oh, God, craves yes. the attention um okay so a lot I want to talk about. Oppenheimer was the big winner of the night, as we expected. It won seven awards, including Picture Director. It Supporting won for actor, Killian actor. Murphy, Robert Downey Jr. It won Cinematography, Editing, and Score. Um, I don't know if you guys played along with your ballots like I did. I went 21 for 23. I What's that, honey? I said, well played. Thank you. I missed Emma Stone, which I think a lot of folks did. And I missed... Uh, Boy and the Boy Heron and the beating For Spider-Verse, right? Yeah, I picked Spider-Verse, although in my head, I even thought, like, I can imagine a world in which Boy and the Heron wins animated yeah. because yeah. there is so much admiration and awe for Miyazaki and it's his last film and all that. But I went with the conventional wisdom, which is Spider-Verse is a juggernaut. I'm going to go with that. And then, like, Emma Stone, I always wanted Emma Stone to win, but figured, again, conventional wisdom and there's so much, like, affection for that Lily Gladstone win. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know what you guys thought. I feel like when Emma Stone heard her name called and the camera cut to her, like, I thought she was going to be sick. I think she was oh, shocked. You can and see I the felt blood a, drain from her face. Yeah, I felt a sense that like, that there was like a, a guilt and like a remorse of, I don't want this. And the way she you know, singled out Lily Gladstone in her speech was so gracious. They became yeah. good friends throughout award season. And that felt genuine. Yeah, no, no. I, I think there was that there was that feeling like, uh, and it's funny because I think the last time we saw something like that at the Oscars was when Olivia Coleman realized that she'd beat Glenn Close mm -hmm. for another Yorgos Lantimos movie. Uh, that look of like, what? Really? You know? Um, yeah, the, it was it was. But I think but she powered through. And, and like you said, she she acknowledged Lily Gladstone and was still like, obviously grateful about it. I don't I, you know, I think to me, there's there's no loser here. Like, because I've seen some people who are like mad that Lily didn't get it, which I get, but then also trying to say that Emma didn't deserve it, which is like, well, no, actually, that was a really great performance also. Yeah. So I think had either of the two of them won, you know, I think I think th that's not a bad thing. So I, I, I hope this opens doors for Lily Gladstone, that for there sure. are other roles waiting for her. I know she's got like a Hulu series starting really soon. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, we, we've not heard the last of her. So that's Oh, no. Oh yeah, that, that would have been a nice moment. Um, yeah. I, I agree, but I think I think nobody got that. Like I think my, Mike Webb in the comments here is saying he went twenty two for twenty three, and and Emma Stone is the one that he missed. Sydney wow. Johnson, thank you so so very much for your kind donation. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. Appreciate having you here. Christine, our good friend Christine is here. Thank you so so much for that. Grammar pedantry alert. For a category about words, screenplay showing words being typed on a screen. Don't use wrong word slash incorrect spelling from maestro it's raining it in not raining it in oh i didn't see oh, that that they I spelled rain i did r e i g a I didn't oh dear I, I didn't realize they spelled it r e i g n well speaking of words on screen let's talk about the in memoriam sequence <laughs> <laughs> i knew you'd have thoughts on this because you always do take it away <laughs> well I, you know like it's it, this is not rocket science people you're you we're here we want to see the names on screen and the faces and remember like oh yeah these people are great and show us some film clips whatever we don't need to see andrea bocelli we don't need to see dancers we want to see the names and the faces and if yeah. you put them way in the back of the screen where you're like at home squinting trying to figure out and then giving us that like boilerplate it looked like the 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 you know terms and conditions of the oscars that we had to sign there <laughs> with kenneth anger on top i'm like what no y'all that you you mess this up every year yeah so um yeah that was the one part of the show i think was an incontrovertible failure but everything else was pretty good 
Um, so a couple things. I agree with you on that. Uh, Sashin says that your resolution, Alonzo, is 144p. Um, is everyone else's internet turned off in your house? Is everyone else's laptop turned off yes, in your house? Yes, okay. yes, Okay, yes. thank you. Just double checking. as good as it gets. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Sorry. If you guys can't tell, he's wearing his Oscar hoodie today, his official Oscar swag. Right. Um, David LeMann, thank you again so much. He says, so glad boy and the Heron winning animated feature Miyazaki deserve for such a beautiful film. It's because of you both and the rest of the LA film critics for giving the platform it needed. Love you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy we picked boy and the Heron. We, but we at LA film critics tend to pick the international choice, the weird choice, yeah. not the obvious big studio. Blockbuster. And our runner up was robot dreams. So, you know, yeah. we were well represented in this year's field. And that was in there too. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about uh, a couple different things. One, the I'm just Ken number, which you mentioned, which yes. surpassed my expectations. Yeah, I was thrilled for that. And the way they pulled that off with him being in the audience first in the cowboy hat down low, sitting behind Margot Robbie, and she's just laughing her ass off. That was so <laughs> fun. And then that it goes from something so small and intimate to like an entire, you know, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That they got like the other main Kens from the movie to be in the number was great. Right. That was that cute. they had that moment with Greta Gerwig and the moment with Emma Stone. Like they really they found like the little granular pieces and then also the big sweep of it all. And Slash. I mean, like, what's not to like? And I guess Wolfgang Van Halen was there too. I didn't notice that oh, wow. in okay. the doing of the thing. But yeah, I, I guess he was there too. Yeah, that was a nice touch. Like I think the the grandiosity of it fit that number yeah. and uh and and fit that movie you know in, in general and then even when when billy eilish did what was i made for that was kind of cool the way they staged that as well it reminded me of when lady gaga did shallow mm -hmm. with bradley cooper a few years back and how it, the camera began at the back of the stage right you know that was sort of a cool thing yeah, I, I think they, I think all five of the songs as done, like were befitting for how they were. Like the John Batiste one was very much, was very intimate and with the close ups, you know, uh, the, the flame and hot song, my joke was like, does nothing rhyme with Cheetos? Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I guess not. <laughs> it's sad. Um, Teddy, so good to see you. Teddy says Slash is the guitarist that Ken would pick to do a solo. That's a uh, great yes. point. Absolutely, he would. You're right. That is a really nice point. I like that a lot. Um, okay, so other things. So Oppenheimer was the big winner. We got to talk about the the very emotional Davine Joy Randolph acceptance mm. speech. I'll talk about that for a sec. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was great. I mean, she was the heavily favored uh, entry this year. She'd won pretty much everything leading up to it. Um, and as you pointed out in one of these, like one of our recaps of something, like she had to come up with a different speech every time. And she did. And she, and she did. Um, <laughs> but I think already just from the moment of uh, who was the actress who uh, talked about her? I'm trying to remember now. Um, Lupita Nyong'o. Yes. Thank you. No, no, yeah. no. For, yes. Yeah. For supporting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That was just, she was already like starting to lose. I was like, oh, no, no, keep it together, David, and you're about to win. You got to go up on stage. Don't start crying now. Uh, and yeah, no, it was, it was, a, it was genuine and, and heartfelt and her dress was great. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, that, that was a lovely way to kick off the evening. I definitely want to get to dresses at some point during this conversation. <laughs> Lots to talk about there, just for Ariana Grande alone. But let's let's get to that later on. Um, yeah, uh, I thought somebody that was... said that Ariana Grande was dressed as both Barbie and the Oppenheimer mushroom cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so many good lines. Somebody in the live chat last night commented that it looked like she's she was trying to fold a fitted sheet. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's perfect. One. I thought that was so uh, funny. And, and somebody, really... said, somebody said that the fact that they honored Oppenheimer and Godzilla Minus One made this the first Oscars where a film and its sequel were both honored. Oh, <laughs> that's a really interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. The thing with that you mentioned with the Bill Condon inspired thing with each person getting a shout out yeah. reminded me of what they do at the Directors Guild Awards, because mm. whether you win the DGA or not, they honor each of the five nominees and each person gets to give a speech and then whoever wins, you know, wins. Um, oh, nice. So it was a nice way to, to give a little love to everyone, no matter what. Cause you know, 
Carrie Mulligan's not going to win, clearly, you know, but uh, in those categories where it was obvious what was going to happen, it was nice to have that that connection. And it was sort of a, a bit of, and Tim Grayson pointed this out in a very thoughtful recap he did for RogerEbert.com that it felt like a bit of like, Frozen. I'm Are sorry, you, you, fro- you froze on me. Uh, oh no, I was just talking about how it felt like like an old Hollywood glamour kind of thing to have, sure. like, like a, the grandeur of the Oscars to have. Um, oh, I did freeze for a second. That's a bummer. Yeah, to have the um, previous but, winners. Yeah. And I think also, you know, I, and I've heard some, you know, gays of a certain age like, oh, just show the film clips. I'm like, you know what? Everyone's seen the film clips. Like at yeah. this point, you can go on YouTube. They've been on a million different award shows. There's, you know, like every, we've seen the clips, even if we haven't seen the movie. So I would much rather that kind of personal moment and and spotlighting rather than just like running the same for your consideration clip that we've probably already seen a million times. Yes. Sydney Johnson, thank you so, so much for your kind donation. Again, says, I've not made a stream in a while. Well, good. We're glad you're here. Um, The Oscars were always special for my mom and I. She recently passed and Barbie was a favorite of ours. I am Ken made my night. I wish you could have seen it. I'm so sorry, Sydney. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, And movies were special to me and my mom as well. It's a huge reason that I do what I do. And for you as well, Alonzo, I know. So uh, that's a big influence for us too. So we definitely, we sympathize with you. So thank you for joining us today. We're very, very happy that you're here. Um, I also want to mention David LeMann. Thank you again so much. The moment of the Oscar past winners presenting the nominees wasn't as well written as the Bill Condon and Hugh Jackman ceremony. It felt like first draft ego petting. Well, oh, yeah. Well. I, 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 like I said, I think some of them felt more like the Rita Moreno one was great. You know, like I think the like generally speaking, the women were great. Like the Tim Robbins one was sort of like, you know. So yeah, I don't know. Um, speaking of uh, of Carrie Mulligan not winning, uh, not a good year for Netflix or Apple. Um, right. Apple got thirteen nominations between Killers and Napoleon and came away empty-handed. And Netflix, for all of their nominees, the only win was for uh, the Wonderful World of Henry Sugar. Oh right, yes, Wes Anderson's first Oscar, which is just yes. amazing to think of that. Yeah, that's true. I mean. I think I kind of figured that Maestro would get nothing, which is amazing when you think about all that craft on display, all that talent on display. I thought, I thought they had makeup at least, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but especially because like the uh, I'm, I'm blanking now on the, the 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 artist who created that. But, you know, he's like a legend in the field right now. Um, Hugh Kazu- Kazu- Kazuhiro. Kazuhiro, you know? yes. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, so I thought maybe that was the one that they had lined up or or like maybe sound just because it was so obvious that, you know, what the sound was i was so thrilled they gave sound to a uh, zone of interest yes like, oh you're paying attention <laughs> because the it, it's that was a tr- that's a toughie and like i remember when lafka you know when we honored mika levy for score and we gave a special thing to uh to johnny burn is that his name um i, I yeah on very little hold sleep on apologies. <laughs> johnny Byrne. uh yeah. you know we sort of like made it a point to to include him in that award so the fact that he has an oscar now for this i'm glad that that category the, the the people voting in that category understood what that movie is doing and how much of what that movie is doing relies upon its soundscape yeah, I agree too. And I think a lot of folks who maybe only missed one or two on their ballots, including our good friend Glenn Whip, who is the LA Times Awards expert who was on our, our live stream here last week, he picked Oppenheimer for sound. He mm. thought Oppenheimer would get eight and I thought it would get seven because sound would go to zone. So that was a, a risk I took that worked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of folks probably thought that um, the zone would not, but, but the sound is so incredibly crucial to zone of interest that um, I'm glad that that happened. While we're talking about depressing movies, let's talk about 20 Days in Mariupol winning. That was a very emotional moment, too. Oh, also, Glazer's speech when Zone yes. of Interest won international film. I think those are two moments of like injecting real-world troubles and politics into the this glamorous night. Yeah, and, and I think in both cases, very organic. Obviously, the Mariupol people, we're going to talk about what's happening in, in uh, Ukraine. And I think, you know, people vote for films for for various reasons and i think 
uh, you know, that's a it's a great film. By the way, you, if you didn't see it, it's currently streaming for free. I think PBS and YouTube have it online. You can watch 20 Days of Mariupol for free. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think part of if you're an Oscar voter, you're thinking that's going to be a speech. Yeah. that needs to be that needs to happen um and then you know when i when glazer got up for for international i thought oh well if any acceptance speech tonight is going to have the word genocide in it like this would be fitting and yeah i think it, i think his speech was really powerful and and um you know it 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 it, it tied into what the movie is about and yeah. so you know I'm, I'm glad he was able to do that for both Jonathan Glazer and Mr. Slop Chernoff, right, they, they they balanced really nicely the raw emotion of the moment of winning while also yeah. having enough, you know, enough... Acumen. <laughs> yeah, presence of mind to say what needs to be said, say the difficult things in this, you know, on this global stage that need to be said. So that, that was Im impressive to be able to balance those two things. Seth yeah. Robel, thank you so, so much for being here and for your kind donation. So. Bring the honorary Oscar winners back to the show and shout out to Louis Vertel for a Rita Hayworth joke that no <laughs> one got. What was a Rita Hayworth joke? I didn't hear that. I, I caught that too and I immediately thought that must be Louis's. Uh, when they were introducing John Mulaney, they said that he has like a, a, a the, the kind of voice that sounds like he should be chastising Rita Hayworth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's talk about the John Mulaney thing. That was awesome. Speaking of sound, that was a good bit. Yeah. Somebody said that he's auditioning to be host next year. And yeah, why not? Oh, um, he'd be amazing. Absolutely. And he actually did host the Governor's Awards this year. And I agree with you. Governor's Awards should be back on the show. You give Mel Brooks an honorary Oscar, you want to see that speech as part of the telecast and, you know, not just shunt it off to YouTube a couple of months ago, which is how they do it now. And sadly, the Governor's Awards is where they honor so many people who somehow or other never got like an actual competitive Oscar, you know, mm -hmm. like that's what Frederick Wiseman has, you know, Aww. and that's what, that's what Diane Warren has and Charles Burnett and Jackie Chan and Anya Svart, all these amazing people in the last few years. And that would be cool to be part of the TV show. And I, I lament that it is not. I agree with you, Seth. Yeah. Um, Darius says, I want the creator to win best visual effects, not Godzilla. I mean, the creator was really impressive sure. visually. I, I agree. But I think what Godzilla minus one did with it, he's, he's the writer and director and the visual mm -hmm. effects supervisor on that budget. That was pretty impressive. I was going to say, as far as like, what, what's the, the term they use the spirit awards about means economy of means, economy of means. <laughs> yeah. I think Godzilla, you know, and, and not that Godzilla like is, you know, Oh, it looks nice for the little thing. I mean, it looks great. It looks, it looks like fucking a, terrifying. it looks competitive <laughs> with those other films and at, you know, a, a fifth of the cost or whatever. So I was delighted about that. It's the first time Japan has won in this category. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, you know, I put the creator on my ballot because I didn't think they were going to go for Godzilla. I figured it was going to have the least sort of like push from whoever its distributor was, but uh, they did. And I was thrilled. Oh, yeah. I had I had Godzilla. David, thank you so, so much. You are too kind. David says, John Mulaney presenting Best Sound by recapping Field of Dreams was genius. So funny. A zone of interest and in winning that and such great inspired choices across the board. Yeah. I mean, he must have written that bit. John Mulaney, because it's it's so oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so his tone to like dig deep in an absurd way on something like that. So yeah, it's like the what's new pussycat bit, you know? Yeah, no, he's he's great. We are big fans of his around here. This is like the one thing that that my kid really wanted to watch. Usually, Nick likes to hang out and watch the Oscars, and I don't know whether it's because I was doing a live stream or what it was, but he was like hiding either in his room or like over here at the dining room table. But then when John Mulaney came up, his little ears perked up. So that was uh, <laughs> that that was big and uh, and exciting. He was bummed that Spider Verse lost to Boy and the Heron. Um, Has so he that's seen good. Boy and the Heron yet? He is not, but he's not really a big Miyazaki person in general. So huh. I think hmm. I am remiss in not showing that to him. Let's talk about what ha why Boy and the Heron won. Why do you think that happened? Because. It's just uh, his final film, perhaps? I think, yeah. I, you know, I mean, and obviously he's said this before on multiple occasions. This is his second win and I think his fourth nomination um, in this relatively new category. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think I think the, the reputation has a lot to do with it. And the film itself, I, I, I think on the merits, like, I, I don't think... Okay, it, now it, you it, froze on me. 
Oh, weird. Okay. How now you're now? better. Okay, now I can hear okay, you again. Good, crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, I think you can still make a case that it won on the merits. It is a great film. It's not like it was just sort of a gimme of like, For oh, sure. you're retiring. But um, but yeah, he is a giant in the field, and 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 I think uh, you know, he is again, it's one of those things where we're dealing with an academy that is larger and that is younger, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of a lot more voters who have grown up on the Studio Ghibli film. Yes, Andrea Gilly says because it's, it's a storytelling masterpiece. I assume you're, you mean because of Miyazaki. Yeah, for sure. Um, Mole 123 says, can we put a ban on Jimmy Kimmel hosting the Oscars? I mean, I, I know why they choose him. You know, he's right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's on ABC also, you know, so there's that nice tie in of all that. And he's solid. And what he does is really hard and he makes it look pretty effortless. You know, the yeah. ability to juggle all of that in the moment. And he's not, he doesn't have one foot in, in the world of cinema. Like it's not, he just isn't doing it. It's like when Carson used to host, you know? So I think there's something about that that gives a certain level of impartiality that he'll goof on anything because he's not worried about what directors aren't going to hire him or whatever. And look, when you yeah. hire Jimmy Kimmel, you get Louis Fertel. So I think that's <laughs> really part of the package deal that we all want. Hello, Doug Arthur is here. Good to see you, Doug. Um, so let's talk about Al Pacino. Let's talk about the absolute Oof. last moment of the night. <laughs> so, I mean, did he not say all 10 of the nominees because they had already done the bit where they play a little something I mean, from each? I, I guess. I mean, that that's what I was, th that was, that was my kind read. I'm like, oh, well, we've already been seeing him throughout the night, so we didn't have to say them again. Traditionally, I think you would still run through them again, but... I was reminded of that famous Golden Globes where Elizabeth Taylor came out at the end and said, gladiator, you know, where like <laughs> Dick Clark had to stop her from opening the envelope before they read the nominees. It was very, you know, yeah, I, that was a, that was a moment. Um, <laughs> what did he say? My eyes see up and I'm, <laughs> but can we trust your eyes, Al Pacino? Yeah, frankly. Come on. Yeah. yeah that was... And I, after the whole Warren Beatty Faye Dunaway fiasco, like why would you even leave that to chance? It, it seemed a little dicey for sure. You know, I, I will say this: it was the one time De Niro smiled all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's talk about not smiling. Do you think that Robert Downey Jr. was legitimately pissed off about that joke about his drug use in the monologue? six of one half dozen the other i think he he knew enough to you know he wasn't going to tommy lee jones it he had to at least appear to be game for the bit whether what he was really game for the bit uh you know we'll wait for the memoir yeah we have a whole uh conversation going on in the chat here about dunkirk i agree ready set moses i think dunkirk is amazing i was it's one of my favorite nolan films the structure of it is pretty dazzling yeah, no, I like that one too. I don't know why we're talking about it. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I, I've, I lost the thread on the origin of Dunkirk, yeah. maybe talking about Nolan films in general, I, I guess. think. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Lynn Hart, I, who was there last night, thank you, Lynn, hey. for being there last night. She says, um, I think he had a brain fart, meaning Al Pacino. Entirely possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back to Robert Downey Jr., the yes. first Saturday Night Live regular cast member to win an Academy Award. That's really amazing to me. I, w I saw you posted that, and I was racking my brain like, who else might have been a possibility? Who else has been nominated? Dan Aykroyd was nominated for Driving Miss Daisy. And then, like, you know, Kristen Wiig was nominated in the screenplay category. And several SNL writers, you know, right. I think have Oscars like Adam McKay. And somebody pointed out Jim Rash was like a guest writer on one episode or something. But, yeah, as far as, like, a member of the Not Ready for Primetime Players Downey, 85, 86 season. He was a cast member. That's wild. Uh, and now has an Oscar. <laughs> That's wild to me. I forget that there was a time that Robert Downey Jr. was on SNL because. That's just not what I think of him when I think of his career and his strengths. I mean, he it can was, be was, funny, but not, that's like a different kind of comedy. It was a very weird season. That was the Joan Cusack, Anthony Michael Hall, um, Randy Quaid uh, season. Oh. Um, that pretty much, you know, Terry Sweeney, Denitra Vance. Like, I think the only person they hung on to from that season was John Lovitz. And then just like got rid of everybody. Maybe Nora Dunn was that year, or maybe she came in later. But yeah, that was that was a very odd year. And and some of the strangest SNL episodes ever happened that year, like the one where George went hosted, but Francis Coppola directed the whole thing. 
yeah, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> and Philip Glass was the musical guest. If you can find this on YouTube, it's so weird. I remember watching this in college being like, what is even happening? How do you remember all this stuff? Are you an SNL expert? Uh, I am not. My friend Nathan Rabin is. He's mm -hmm. currently going through episode by episode on his, uh, on his blog. But oh. I was a sophomore in college that season, and I had been a fan of Anthony Michael Hall, you know, from the John Hughes movies yeah. and stuff. And, and so I was glued to every that was the year madonna hosted and the year oprah hosted it was just it's a weird year yeah interesting um danny mcketo is here good to see you danny danny says al pacino i think there was a teleprompter issue that was not fixed or revised when michelle pfeiffer had to cancel so i guess there was like a scarface uh... reunion planned Maybe, yeah, and maybe both of their sets of dialogue were still on the screen. I would like to think not. I would like to think they've got their act together better over there, but then, you know, we're not that far out from the la-la land year, so anything is possible. Yeah, I just think after that, like, and after that and after the, the slap, like, I would just assume that they leave nothing to chance at this point, right? <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> So, uh, and Mike Webb, I didn't realize until afterward that Chris Nolan directed Al Pacino in Insomnia. Yes, an early, oh, really good Christopher Nolan right. film. Yeah. Yes. David LeMann, thank you so, so much. Point out, Alonzo, remember SNL alum Eddie Murphy was nominated also for Dream in, Girls. Yes. Correct. So, correct. yeah, that's a good one. Yes, I, I've, I've forgotten about that. Um, I lost some stuff. Dana Carvey was a holdover too, says Fast Bowler. Uh, I don't know that he was in the 85, 86 season, but I don't have it in front of me. So, yes, for sure. Um, yeah, Raymond points out Killers of the Flower Moon left with zero wins. That is very surprising to me. It is Scorsese's third 0 for 10 movie, apparently. Gangs and then uh, The Irishman and now this one. Wow. Yeah. So, what's that about, do you think? How do we, is it just that these years are, particularly competitive and other stuff wins like what happens there these are masterful uh, you know, films i mean we were talking about this last night and dave is like i bet there's this impression that like scorsese's won all the awards he doesn't need it even though he's won best director once oh you froze um, you know oh. honey you froze okay am i back now, now you're no. back yes okay, okay. So you're saying the impression of scorsese is that he's got all the awards already and he doesn't need it and even though he's only won best director once but i mean obviously that there's so many other people involved in these nominations, other actors and craftspeople and whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that's about. I don't either. I don't know. I think maybe with with Killers, was there concern or just dis dismay or something that it was three hours and 26 minutes long? Um, I saw a lot I, of conversation about how like it needed to be edited more. I would hope not, but you know, who can say yeah. really? Uh, I mean, it's not like, Oppenheimer was all that short and it won best editing. Right. Um, Oppenheimer was three hours long. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a New York LA thing. Uh, oh. I had no idea. But as our great friend, Justin Chang pointed out when we were on stage at the Orpheum doing our film week, Oscar prediction show, mm -hmm. he's written a whole book on editing and talked to all kinds of people about this. And a lot of editing is not editing, but it's the screenplay. So a lot of times people say like, oh, why couldn't the editor have made this shorter? That is often a screenplay issue uh, and not true. an editing yeah. issue. Yeah, and, and certainly there have been examples where making a film shorter makes it seem longer because we're missing important plot details and character moments that would have made things make more sense. And, uh, yeah. and so without that, you're just sort of like, well, you, it, it becomes less involving because we're missing chunks that need to be there you know yeah oh i'm sorry that one of us is always freezing for you half nakai thank you for being a channel member it says alonzo never freezes for me it's always christy <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i don't know i don't know why that is because everything I, is always the same yes if we could fix it we would we don't know <laughs> i don't get it um oscar toledo is here so good to see you so happy to have you here with us um uh joao good to see you points out that billy eilish has two oscars and scorsese has one this is true and uh and she is what 20 she's 22 years old two. yeah wow that's uh, yeah apparently she and her brother are like the fourth and fifth people under the age of 30 to have two oscars i think i thought i heard that in the on the red carpet show somewhere but i don't know who the other ones are so 
Euros. So she won a couple of years back for her theme song for No Time to Die. And of course, for What Was I Made For Last right. Night. And uh, anyway, very, very surprising. Let's get into clothes because I like <laughs> to do that. I love, did you guys watch any of like the E! pre-show with Laverne Cox? I enjoy doing that. Did you watch that, Alonzo? Uh, I, we changed our cable package because really the only reason I still have cable is to get TCM. And uh -huh. so they, they, it was this thing where I did like pick a handful of channels and uh, I did not pick E. And so Dave was like, oh, let's watch E. And I was like, oh, that was when I realized, oh, we don't have it anymore. Sorry. So yeah, I didn't Aww. get to it. Ah, uh, um, it's entertaining, you know, because the, the question that she asks everybody is, tell me the story of this outfit. Tell me the story <laughs> of what you're wearing. What is the journey? Which sounds like kind of an esoteric question, but then she ends up getting really interesting answers from oh, I it. Bet. Yeah. There was a funny bit with her and Simu Lu, and uh, she was saying to him, like, what's the best part of being here tonight? And he was saying, it's just incredible to be surrounded by people I have adored and really looked up to since childhood. So many people, and I'm talking to one right now, and she goes, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> since childhood, girl. <laughs> and he was he was like trying to be so gracious and like <sighs> say the right thing in the right moment on live TV. And that, that's that line from, from Valley of the Dolls, don't give her that I've loved you since I was a little girl routine or she'll stab you in the back. That was basically it. But <laughs> And she was like, love you. <laughs> yeah, but he looked great. Um, that's so funny. Oh, Matthew Gladney's here. Hello, good to see you. Thank you for being a channel member. Um, sorry, you've already discussed this, but the in memoriam section was once again disappointing. How they yes. managed to do it year after year is kind of amazing at this point. We did talk about that and yes. we agree with you. It was a train wreck. Uh, yeah, someone Al took a picture. I think Allison Martino took a picture and put it on her Facebook page that like you could look if at the tiny little font and like, Treat Williams is in there, you know, like people who deserve more respect than that. Yeah, I, I went to the website and I was like, oh, there they all are. But, you know, it was, you know, just the way that the camera is set up, we're like, suddenly we've got like these dancers and the singers and like back here are these like screens that you have to sort of yeah. squint and figure out like, y'all, come on. No, that's not, it is a not lot. doing uh, anybody any favors. I agree. They deserve more respect than that. Danny McKetto says Billie Eilish is now the youngest person to have two Oscars and Phineas is the second youngest. Oh, okay. That, that scans. Good that is really interesting. Katie Robinson's here. I'm so glad you made it. Good to see you. I know that the lives are often kind of a weird time for you. So thanks for being here. Um, yes. Christine says Zendaya's dress was fire. Yes, I totally mm -hmm. agree. Um, yeah. who, whose dress did you like, Alonzo? Who looked great? Uh, I thought, uh, like I said, I thought Davon Joy Randolph looked great. I thought Rita Moreno looked great. Um, I was kind of into Sandra Hulers. I mean, it was, she was sort of dressed as an award, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, you know, the, the, the Emma Stone dress, which fell apart and was repaired later, uh, I thought was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, I boy, Matt Bomer in purple velvet, oh. like oof. to die that, for that worked. Uh, I like Coleman <laughs> Domingo's, uh, tux. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I saw there was the, the guy, the try guys guy, whose name is now flown out of my head, who, who did the, the tux plus, you know, voluminous skirt thing. He's one of the voices in Nimona. Oh. Which I was like, all right, well, that's that's a cool look. But like, you know, uh, Billy Porter really nailed that as the first Billy Porter did that. It. And then they parodied it on the other two. I don't know if you ever watched that show. Uh, and so I was sort of like, uh, uh, Eugene Lee Yang. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Um, and so I was like, all right, I guess we're we're still gonna go for this. But he did it in a in a it was in kind of a not a plum, it was more of a it was like a magenta, like a fuchsia. Thank you. Yes, yes, definitely in the <laughs> in the in the in the, the maroonish category. Anyway, that was really that was that was a pretty that was a bold look. Um I'm trying to think who else. I don't know what what, what were your faves? I love Lupita Nyongo. Always. And it turned out, I mean, she can wear anything. She can wear yeah. any color and it just totally pops. Um, she and I realized Divine, Divine Joy Van Duffel were wearing the same 
shade of light blue you realize like once they once they hugged on stage they're both kind of wearing like light blue sequins with feathers it was sort of a nice a nice coincidence (laughs) there a nice bit of symmetry there um yeah i love what she she was and i love dave vinder randolph's dress too that just was an extravaganza that was beautiful Mm. um i loved emma stone's dress until it fell apart i love just that color on her and uh a lot of people chose kind of mermaid ocean looking colors and textures and patterns to the beading of their dresses and to the the shape the curve hugging shape of of their dresses so it was like mermaid chic anya taylor joy was one of those where it was just like a a crystal beading kind of thing with like a a light blue to it and you know just she of course can wear anything too isa ray good lord oh yeah she looked dynamite stunning like just everything worked just the the lengthening of like the high top knot with the deep plunge of the black sequin v and then the legs slit like it was just a beautiful kind of long line on her and her skin was radiant she just looked amazing from two Uh, best picture nominees this year yes that's really funny (laughs) And, and actually i think laverne cox asked her about that on e like what what is happening here and Issa Rae is like i mean clearly the the note here is that you should cast me <laughs> and your movie will get a best picture nomination so so she was funny about it fast bowler says robert Downey jr finally owned and wore heels and not those not fooling anyone sneaker lifts i didn't notice his <laughs> shoes uh, I did not care for uh, 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 Hoyte van Hoytema's sneakers. I just, okay. That did, did, did not wash with me. Um, and can we talk about Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> what about him? <laughs> what the hell? He looked like he had been rolled in Crisco before coming out on stage. Like he was, he he his face looked dirty. His hair looked oily. The 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 tux was this sort of unbecoming done color yeah. it was not a good look it was it felt like he'd been taking fashion notes from jared leto that's really funny um but i thought that matthew mcconaughey introducing bradley cooper was a mm. nice touch because i feel like they have very similar career arcs uh in, in that they were himbos <laughs> yes in that they were like early on arrogant kind of pretty boy jerks uh-huh. like asshole like southern boys or preppies and have since shown a great deal more substance than we initially gave them credit for yeah yeah i mean i i I see the (laughs) i see the symmetry there you know um but uh yeah i just i thought he looked very like he just you know i once used the word oleaginous to describe him in a in a film and i thought that's how he looked last night oh my gosh um zendaya a couple of folks are mentioning zendaya in the comments yeah. including our friend chris Wright. it was like metal had been poured on her <laughs> it was just like sleek and clinging and of course she's five foot ten and can wear everything i mean if you saw what she wore during the dune press tour Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Including her vintage the, Terry Mugler. Terry Mugler. You know. <laughs> uh, I thought Melissa McCarthy looked good. I thought that was a really, that dress really like, you know, va va voomed her up. Yeah, her hair looked nice. She had kind of an old old Hollywood glamour kind of big wave to her yeah. hair. It was, was very subtle. But the thing that she did, who was she with when she presented? Why Octavia am I blanking? Spencer. Yes. That felt to me like a very cheesy kind of old fashioned, like forced repartee on the Oscar well, stage. I think the joke was supposed to be like they were going to come out do a do a dumb groany bit like that and then mm. go to the script and then acknowledge that the script is better because they were giving out screenplay. I see. I don't think it worked, but I think that was the, that was the intention. Yes, Raymond says Coleman Domingo's suit was fire. I mean, he yeah. is just sartorial and he takes chances. Mm-hmm. He always makes exciting chances. And like Simu Liu looked really great too. He had like a like a like a tux jacket with no shirt on, and then it was tied with a crystal brooch at the hip. There was a lot of man brooch going on last night. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, like Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. and like uh, Killian Murphy and Ben Kingsley, like a lot of male uh, lapel jewelry happening at the, uh, which I felt like I'd not not something I'd seen a lot in previous Oscar shows. Yeah, for sure. Um, Jeffrey, thank you for saying I look great. I've had a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate you uh i there's so many comments i'm getting lost in here david leman thank you so so much you are too kind says al pacino having a senior moment on stage felt like the performance of himself doing a duncan commercial in the adam sandler movie <laughs> jack and jill 
<laughs> the first thing I thought about when he walked on stage was the Duncachino moment. Like he I, says I don't know, that. This is not the legacy that he wants to carry with him, but I'm sorry, Al. It's what I think of now. No, he <laughs> David even says that. It was like Duncachino. I thought he lost it on stage and was gonna say hoo-ha, hoo-ha. <laughs> yeah, that was uh that was strange for sure. Um, okay, I want to scroll down a bit. Mike Webb, thank you so so much for being so generous. We appreciate you. Nice to have Wes Anderson win an Oscar, but according to Kyle Buchanan, the reason why he couldn't attend is that he is in Germany shooting his next film with Michael Sarah. I, I I figured he was, you know, working in Europe was the first thing that came to mind for him not being there. Yeah, again, I'm like, like, come on. Yeah, I mean, people <laughs> pop in and pop out all the time. I mean, Ariana Grande was on Saturday Night Live on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then you know made it out to the Oscars. Like I, I, it seems to me like they they could have, anyway. Good for Wes. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm happy he won too, but I'm thinking, okay, you're the favorite in this category. You might finally win your Oscar. I guess he didn't give a shit, but like I thought I would I would make the flight. That's just me. Yes. Courtney, Courtney Z is here. Courtney, you were so lovely to be so active last night in our live stream. So thank you for coming back and joining us again today. And yes, we are now talking about fashion. So your timing is good. Courtney says, makes sense. These people chose colors, those colors since it's spring. Yeah, a lot of light blue, a lot of light green. True. Um, not a lot of black. I mean, like Jamie Lee Curtis wore this very elegant simple black dress but mostly there was a lot of color can we talk about ariana grande's dress <laughs> i don't want to be mean you know but it was kind of awful like the, the actual pink column dress was lovely and elegant and a nice touch given barbie like it was a, a fitting dress i thought and then like what is the thing the giant poofy shrug thing around her i'm, I'm confused by that still it was nutty, but I kind of liked the excess of it all, you know? And, okay. and obviously she and uh, Cynthia Erivo were out there, you know, color signaling wicked. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so she was in dark green leather. That was a cool dress too. Yeah, so maybe maybe the shrug thing was meant to be like the Glinda bubble. <laughs> oh, I like, that is actually an excellent call. Okay, I'm going to go back and revise everything I said, because if that is like a fashion manifestation of Glinda coming down, I think you're right. Just I'm sorry, theory. Ariana Grande. Just a theory. I think that's really good. <laughs> David, thank you again. Um, seeing the ballet dancers dancing during the immemorium made me cringe. It felt like horrendous Debbie Allen numbers. They didn't show one close-up of the screen, and it felt disrespectful to the people who passed away. Yeah, they did dancers two years ago, and it was really upbeat in a very clanging way. There was, I mean, there was one in recent memory that I seem to recall being okay where they brought out like sarah mclaughlin or somebody like mm -hmm. one person on a guitar singing a sad song and then it was mostly just like now let's watch the screens with the names on them which is the thing that we want to see in this part not the performers and so yeah uh, the, the it was too much and and too distracting and and hard too hard to to read what was going on so yeah that was not well handled. Uh, yeah, but, Heather you know. Green asks, how much glamour can you have at four o'clock? I mean, they start early. The stylists come to your house or your hotel suite oh, yeah. or wherever at you dawn. are. <laughs> like, even when you have to cover it, well, I used to cover it for the Associated Press. You got to get dressed super early and, and get in there at a certain time. Although I loved it starting at four o'clock in the afternoon. Like, it was, it, daylight saving time is very jarring, but yeah. I love that it was over at like 730. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll tell you, as a kid living on the East Coast who, like, had to get to a point where I was allowed to stay up for the the end of the Oscars, like, the fact that it's now happening earlier and, and ending earlier, you know, for 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 the, for you, for you baby gays out there on the, in the East Coast, <laughs> this, one, this one's for you. Yeah, maybe they'll keep it at four o'clock in the afternoon. That was pretty great. And, and I guess it didn't start right at four because there was a protest going on outside, a, a pro-Palestinian protest. Was that and it? Th there was was a protest going on but from what i hear the the starting late was really about the ads like that it was it was more of a sponsor driven oh. thing but oh you know. okay well that makes more sense christine yeah. thank you so much appreciate you appreciate all you do around here speaking of poured metal and kuti gatwa is that how you say it on the red carpet i didn't see that oh i didn't see him on the red carpet did not am i saying that name correctly yeah he's the uh, he's the the, uh, the one of the kens 
Oh, yes. Okay. I did not see that. Liz Marion Souza in Brazil. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to see you here. Amazing recap. Big fan. Always here. EXO from Brazil. I am thrilled. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. One thing that was so cool about the live stream last night with people from all over the world, Athens, Paris, Brazil, Costa Rica, um, Africa. We have a new friend in Africa now. So that oh, was just, it's always so humbling right. to me that folks take the time to, to come and do that. So thank you so much. Um, Oscar Toledo mentions Chris Hemsworth and Anya Taylor-Joy awkward delivery. Seemed like they didn't know what was going to happen and when to finish. That was a whole lot of beautiful on stage there, though. I was going to say, did, were they talking? I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a point? Um, oh, speaking of, the Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling thing was super oh, cute, too. Yes, that was fun. It was funny. And obviously, you know, they have a movie coming out. But nonetheless, there you go. if you're going to have synergy, at least like give it to people who like know what to do at the moment, then they definitely did. Yeah, um, that was that was a lot of fun, and also the um, the Schwarzenegger and Dane DeVito thing with Michael Keaton Batman. <laughs> yes, big night for uh, Dan Waters. <laughs> oh yes, that's true. That was a funny bit too. I thought I, I really enjoyed that. Okay, yes. you guys are just overwhelming me here, and I'm so honored. Thank you so much. I gotta get to everyone. Okay. We got Liz. Let us get to Teddy KGB. Always a good friend of ours. Thank you so much for your kind donation. Pretty sure the reason the Academy pumps music over the In Memoriam segment is that the crowd in the theater used to applaud some names more than others, right. which I well, always found disrespectful. For sure. And, and I think at some point the memo went out that was like, hold all of your applause until the end so we're not playing favorites. Because, yeah, you're right. That was tacky. Um and music is fine. It's just like we don't need choreography. We don't need to see the singers, you know. Yeah. Heather asks, have the readings been posted yet? Good question. I was wondering about that because the the conventional wisdom for so long was like, oh, they're nominating these movies that no one's heard of. And if we could expand the field and blah, blah, blah. Like, all right, well, Barbie and Oppenheimer were like yeah. two of the biggest movies last year. And they were the biggest nominees of last night. So if that's true, then the numbers are going to be better. And if they weren't, then the numbers don't have anything to do with what gets nominated. It's about people generally being burned out on award shows and the Oscars no longer being this rare moment where, ooh, movie stars are on television. Yeah. I don't know, maybe we can do a little bit of research. I was going to have Chris look into that for me, but now Chris is on a work call, so he can't. Um, Danny McKetto, can we talk about the backstage runway? Seems very awkward to me. I kind of liked it. Uh, the, it was a little weird when you had like Janet Yang for the president of the Academy talking about stuff and like uh, was Billie Eilish trying to sneak by her. It was like that. There were some, there were some traffic jam moments there. I mean, I did like the rock and John Cena crossing paths. That was funny. Oh um, yeah. But, but yeah, it seemed a little odd. David Allen Greer, by the way, a really good voice of God. Yes, he did a good job with that, I thought. So speaking of the John Cena bit, first of all, I thought it was hilarious and so well yes. staged of him like popping his little head out and being all awkward about it and then coming out in Birkenstocks. Like yes. that was hilarious. Um, there's a photo of the For LA all the Times. fans out there. Right? There's a photo <laughs> that um, the LA Times posted of what all he was wearing. So he was pretty much totally naked except for the tiniest, well, I don't know how big it was, but a piece saw... of material like not a full loin like i don't know is it a cob piece i guess uh it's a um what's that called there's a term it's not a dance belt it's a uh there's a term for it it's not a, a cod piece is, is intended to be pronounced i think um <laughs> but i did anyway, see it, it was uh, it was a thing our friend peter de bruges posted a picture of it on facebook so yeah I, i've seen it it was a, i think it's a, a modesty sock i'm not sure quite what they call it but yeah anyway it was amazing. Um, nice. That was a highlight for sure. David N., I'm so glad you're here. He says, and thank you so much for your kind donation. We're always happy to see you around here. And uh, he says, thanks for hosting last night, Christy. Thank you for coming. So glad Alonzo's back. I am too. Besides, Cena and Ken, Jonathan Glazer and the Mariupol speeches were peak. I don't get the Kimmel hate out there. He's our Bob Hope. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it is a thankless job. Like no one's ever going to be like, oh, well done. Like it's, they get nothing but, but criticism. But I'd say like, I mean, look, we, we've seen some doozies in our, you know, in our years of doing this. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the Seth MacFarlane year, the James Franco and Anne Hathaway year, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tough gig. And I think, I think Kimmel does it as well as anybody out there. 
Yeah. David, thank you so, so much. David LeMann says it's very fitting that Alonzo suggested Matthew McConaughey was taking fashion advice from Jared Leto because it's the 10-year anniversary of their wins for the great yeah. film Dallas Buyers Club. There you go. And which was just like Oppenheimer, double wins for acting just like Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah. True, 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 true. There you go. All good stuff there. Um, we It's pronounced Chudy, I'm being told. I apologize if I said it wrong. I don't know. Um, and Cootie is oh, Shooty. Thank you, Nancy. It's pronounced Shooty. N C U T I. Katie says this too. I believe all you guys. You're all very persuasive. Thank you for correcting me. That's good. Hello, Dalen. Good to see you. Thanks for being a member. We appreciate Thanks. it. The Spielberg and Kate text bit was genius. Oh, yes. That was funny. The, the Kate McKinnon uh, uh, Spielberg uh, back. And I forth. think I missed that. I might have oh. run to the bathroom. What was that? Kate McKinnon was presenting with... America Ferreira? Yes. And uh, there was uh, they were talking about documentaries, and then Kate McKinnon talk, you know, added Jurassic Park to the list of documentaries, and America Ferreira had to keep explaining to her that it wasn't a, a documentary. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then, the, the, and, and basically, she, it culminated with her saying, well, is, is Jeff Goldblum real? And America Fair says, no. She goes, well, then who have I been sending my nudes to? And they cut back to Spielberg. Oh, <laughs> but Spielberg oh. had been in on the bit before, like, you know, with the, anyway, it was, he was, he was very game and, and, and did his part well. Yes. Raja Lakshmi says that John Cena stole the show with the most unexpected moment in years. Truly. Yeah. Did not see that coming. <laughs> I, th I thought for sure it was going to be Barry Keoghan. <laughs> oh, yeah, that when they could set be... up the streaker moment, I was like, "Oh, Barry Keoghan, here we go!" And uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, one of us is frozen now. It's either me or it's you. Ever get a streaker again? Uh, you know what? Who would have thought the Will Smith moment would happen? Like anything's, I think, uh, the, the, try though they might. Anything is possible at the Oscars. The left video, man, quality is very low. He needs to increase his resolution. I don't know how to do that, Raja Lakshmi. I apologize. I am no. in charge of our little Riverside it's stream here. It's my cruddy little laptop. You want to buy me a camera? We'll talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I am also on my laptop camera. So um, we are trying our best here from our respective homes, and we appreciate you being here and, and sharing your thoughts. Um, yes, Courtney says, I teared up when I saw Matthew Perry. I was such a big Friends fan back in the day. Just ordered him. That's the name we're looking for. Sorry, did I freeze up, up or did you freeze up? Uh, one of us did. <laughs> God damn it. What's Heather Green says it's called a modesty pouch. Modesty pouch. Okay. Good to know. Right. Modesty patch, maybe. Anyway, <laughs> um, we are getting a lot of information. Chrissy froze again. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. Maybe my husband's on the laptop too. I don't have a kid behind me playing video games anymore. I can't even this blame is, my kid. This is artisanal small batch YouTube here, people. We're not. Yeah, back like back in the old days. <laughs> anyway, we are doing our best. Why is the resolution poor and the screen freezes right? I don't know, Roger Lakshmi. We need better equipment, apparently. Farm to um, table. <laughs> yes, we will. Uh, we will. Okie doke. Delighted that you're all here. I don't want it to be bad. Um, Dalen, thank you so much for your contribution. It says, I also want to make sure we give a special shout out to the Godzilla team and their incredible well-themed shoes and, and golden yes. Godzilla statues. That was very good. Did you see the Godzilla shoes? I didn't see the shoes, but I thought they were all carrying little figures. They're all, yeah, they're all carrying figures. They, they all had shoes where like the heel was like a Godzilla. There's pictures. Oh, that's online. cute. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, they, the, the, there should have been a translator though. I mean, they, they, oh. they gave it their best shot, but that was. Yes. Thank you, Gage, for your kindness and support. I, I appreciate it. Anyway, okay. um, we are probably going to wrap up, I think. It's so great to have you here. And I, I don't want to make this bad. <laughs> I want this to be good. You spent time with us this morning and I want it to be good. So um, I appreciate all of you. Um, thank you for being with us last night. We will definitely do more vertical live streams because that was so much fun. Like I, apparently I can talk for four hours straight. I learned that about myself last night and that was I very exciting, <laughs> very empowering. Um, I feel like the, uh, 
there's opportunities, Alonzo, for you and I to perhaps go live maybe before a screening, maybe after a screening. Like when you and I are in the same place, we can sure. just prop up the phone on the on a tripod and just chat for a bit about whatever. So so let's uh, definitely make plans to do that again. If you are here now, that is wonderful. Come on back tomorrow at noon Pacific. We're going to do our Dune Part 2 live spoiler chat. We've been meaning to get to Dune Part 2 for a while now. The Oscars kind of got in the way, many scheduled juggling things, but we're going to do a Doom Part 2. I will put a link to that when we finish here. I'll put a link to that pinned at the top of the comments here. Um, it's also on our live page. I went and took Nick to see Doom Part 2 in IMAX over the weekend, and that was really fun. So um, he loved it. I loved watching it again and uh, definitely subscribe caught more things. Subscribe if you haven't already. I love that. Oh, yeah, and I've got a newsletter if you've not already subscribed to that. That is um, available at christylamere.com. You can press the subscribe here button and subscribe there. And you get things beyond what we do here at Breakfast All Day and beyond what we do at our Patreon. So um, we'd love to see you. Fast Bowler, thanks for the live chat. Agree. Jesse, thanks for being here. Um, Leo, Alex, Chris Wright, Christine, Langley, David LeMans, glad you're feeling better. Courtney, last night was so fun. Kay Walton, thank you for being there last night. Um, Mike, thank you. Anyway, Lewis Cook, thank you both for a lovely stream. I'm glad you're feeling better. Alonzo, Raymond, come on back tomorrow. This is the romper room section of our show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still going to do it, guys. I love saying hi to our folks. Um, have a great day, a great afternoon. I'll see you back here tomorrow at noon. See you tomorrow, Alonzo. See you then. Bye.